Man of God, what is your opinion on the issue of sowing seed in the Church of God? All this theology of seed, seed faith, where is it from? The gospel is not about making men rich. The gospel is about making men arrive at a destination called salvation. As you release your seed to the Lord tonight, there will be an outpouring, the perfection, the perfection of everything that has been done. God punish the devil. Return back to the true gospel. This commercial gospel is not gospel. This material gospel is not gospel. Get the people back to the living word of God. You don't become a Christian because God will give you a house. You don't become a Christian because God will give you a car. Our faith, we cannot reduce God to the level of car and cloth. We are born again and saved because God has done the greatest thing in our life and that is the salvation of our soul. I speak to you. It's time you define your relationship with Jesus. Don't follow Jesus that people tell you about. Know Jesus for yourself. Know Jesus for yourself. I tell you this is you are not a tighter, you end up a beggar. Hey! It is fraud. And they have put people, wow, have they put people under bondage. This is one of the most disturbing things you might ever see. When a man of God says, give money to be blessed, it's an insult to the work of redemption. All your time, I can pray for you to receive grace to be a genuine titan, a happy titan. But for God to open the heaven, it's breaking scriptures. Open the heaven over a non-titan. No matter how many put your hands together. Christianity begins with death to self. True Christianity begins with death to self. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ who lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I am out of the equation. When Christ who is our life, shall appear we shall appear with him in glory if you then be risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ is seated at the right hand of god i am dead my life is healed with christ in god so my pursuits are the things that god wants not the things that i want when people develop a reprobate heart they don't want the truth of the gospel they only want themselves they are in the worship of self they don't want to hear what is god's word saying they don't want to be built in the accurate precise wholesome who guy you know healthy word of god all they want is what i want 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 like a spoiled child and the pastor is granting them that request and they are self-deceived into the worship of self and they built a humongous monster of selfishness it will be hard for such people to know god if all the church people pray for is car house money connection car house money wife husband fruit of the womb that church is in idol worship it is the worship of self the worship of self because every time they meet is car house i want 90 persons 90 persons who will give five thousand dollars now i know you've been given 
know you, you, you've been given every day. You're going to give tomorrow. Come here. 90 persons. I'm going to give you one of these mantles. I'm telling you, if you believe I'm a man of God, God sent me. And I'm not doing this of my own will. Fall! Get out of your seat. Get out of your seat now. Get out of your seat quickly. Come on. Come on. Get out of your seat. One more number. And you need to be standing here. You need to get out of your seat. Don't be amongst those that miss God. Don't miss God now. Not now. Not now. Not now. Don't miss God. Is fraud. I beg of you, we are not telling you to pay tight because we want your money. When you don't tight, you risk your life. Listen, I'm a deep teacher of the word. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your worth. When you are not a tighter, any attack on you can take your life. No matter the prayers. I will rebuke the devourer for your worth. So the first thing Titan does is to protect your life, not money. Not worth. And you can't use one scripture to cover the other scripture. You can't say himself took my infirmities when you have not paid tight. I watch people. There's a man who sold his property. He did not tight. And funny enough is that when you don't tight, the money you're leaving behind, somebody will eat it. That money you are not tightened, somebody will eat it. When we prayed, it doesn't believe in tight, it doesn't pay tight. Small fever for four days, it was gone. Those who don't pay tight, you're keeping yourself vulnerable. Don't, don't allow money. If I'm not tightening, it's greed. It's what? It's greed. Because what are you? What, what is tight? How much is the money that you cannot give to God? There's nothing I cannot give to God. Nothing. When a man holds on to tight, it's a sign of greed. Sign of what? That was what Adam did. Adam held on to what belongs to God. Fraud. The people you are talking to, some of them cannot pay rent. The people you are talking to, and you are saying it to collect the little one they have. And only a fool will give to such a man. But because people are under spell, when they say, Bring. Spell is broken. Our mood don't do. Seventy percent of the prophets don't preach against sin anymore. We're in trouble. Quote me. Go and pick the top ten churches. Pick their sermons the last six months and tell me if you find sin in their sermon. Last six months, I dare you. Come and see me with the tape. There's no more sin. Oh, young people are going there. We're in trouble. We're in big trouble. Marriages are crashing every day. Feminism has taken the rain everywhere. And we're afraid of preaching the truth. That God made man as a head of your home. How dare you say we are the same? We are not the same. How dare you? Like, leave the church. Man is the head of marriage. So it is written in the beginning. That's how it was. We are afraid. We are scared now. We are scared of preaching the ancient word. We are scared of preaching this word. Because if we preach it, they won't come to church. If they won't come to church, it will affect your tithes and offerings. Not because you live off it. You won't pay your bills to affect your followership online. They won't follow you on social media. Your brand becomes weakened. Who cares? God help us to go back to this thing. This book, this book is ancient. Before you were born, it was here. After you leave, you'll be here. We were all here. When these prosperity preachers started coming. You know, I don't know. I was, I was... Oh, it pained me, but I didn't know what to do. We were on campus in the 70s when these people started sending their free poison. Free. We got their pamphlet free. They sent us their tapes free. Ah! But you know, we were excited. Even me, I was excited. Until one day, the Lord just alerted me. He said, there's a problem coming. 
But you know, I didn't have position. I wish I have grown like this that time. I would have done something. <laughs> ha! I didn't have position. God said, watch. This message is dangerous. It would destroy something in Nigeria. But I didn't know what to do with it. The day I was really alerted, the Lord just, I used to do house to house visitation to our students. So I just visited a sister in her room and I saw that she listed, she put something on her by her bed and said, My daily confession. She wrote it I'm an overcomer, I'm a millionaire. I am this, I am this, I am this, I am this, I am this. I cannot be less than this. So as I was looking at it, I was asking her, ah, Sister, what is this? So that's my daily confession. When I wake up, instead of all this long, long, long quiet time that you people worry us about, I just wake up and I just do as I say, I'm an overcomer. I'm a conqueror. I am this. I am that. I said, so what of your quiet times? Uh, oh Lord, dude, what did I you look when I started making this confession? I just realized that things are happening. Hallelujah. Then no. I went away crying. I said, so this is what these Kenneth Agin books were doing to these people. But you can't fault it because it carries some certain Bible passages. It was from these things that personal ministries started. You know in our time, nobody ever had boldness to start a work for God and put his name. You can't do it. You can't be thinking of preparing your, your first son to come and take over. It's never done. But as this thing was seeping in, silently, it didn't look offensive. It didn't attack anybody. It was just coming in. Just coming in. Suddenly I saw that when we get to the place of prayer, our posture in prayer changed. You know when we say let us pray. The normal thing we used to do then. Shikaro. Father. That's what you see in our fellowship. After those things started coming in, I see brothers there. Hallelujah, God. God. Sundarabo. You say, concerning your work, I shall command you. I command you. Do something. Do something. Hallelujah. They don't need them to pray again. So Bible study was replaced with phraseology. So the new trend of messages that you are hearing, somebody nurtured it. Why men slept? Why men slept? The enemy came in and so tears. Why we slept? It caught my attention when one of our brothers that used to be a great Bible teacher 
Because when we're on campus, then God raised brothers for us who will forge their Bible like this and stand for two hours exposing the word of God. Ha, ah, I saw this brother. He will come and say, Yes, this is a new era. There's a new move now. And we are moving by the spirit. They began to speak like Americans. I said, God. What is going to happen the only thing i could do for myself then was to guard my life the reason why i was not swept off was that it was a deliberate guarding i was in the midst of it all i had to go back to the bible all this theology of seed seed faith where is it from everything so is it if you want first class so is it the principles the dignity of hard work was put aside and faith was taught as gambling you are wondering why it has spread so much nobody guard against it when i grew a little more and god began to give me influence it became my first responsibility to guard the doctrine in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 to 9, it says, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Just as Daddy Geibel Akani has said the issue of sowing of sow is not supposed to be as bad as this in the body of Christ. Paying tithe, giving to the church of God is not something that is supposed to be forced on anyone. It is something that everyone should do willing without being forced to do it. If a child of God take his or her study of the word of God, seriously then no one will be fooled or turn a victim by false and prosperity doctrines. God bless you.